Great to be here. Um, some of you at the SPM will have heard me speak before. I don't normally have notes, but um, under strict instructions from my sustainability champion, they have not to miss out anything. So I may refer to them from time to time. But it really is so cool to be here. Um, share Nikki's sentiments when it comes to Owen. I'm not going to try and upstage Owen. But Owen, I might hire you, so do come and see me afterwards. An impressive young man. Our story's been told a number of times. Uh, we've been carbon zero at RICO now for 10 years. Um, we're in a pretty unsustainable business when it comes to environmental preservation. Uh, copiers, which is what we're known for, are not very environmentally friendly. Uh, they use uh, a lot of power, they use a lot of paper, um, they give off CO2 emissions. Um, it, it's not a great, a great game to be in if you want to change the planet. Uh, all the more reason for a business like ours to focus on seeing what we can do to recover some of the damage our products make throughout the world. And so uh, Rico has for many, many years focused very much on trying to balance the book, so to speak, in terms of uh, ensuring that we give back to the planet what we use up. And um, uh, being carbon zero is a big part of that. That happened 10 years ago. Um, and as a result, as often happens in businesses, um, you, you, you learn to focus on, on the products you sell, the services you, 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 you provide, um, your utilization of power, paper, all the world's natural resources, um, fuel, maybe cycle to work, a few cyclists in the audience here I know, um, but ultimately it does kind of plateau, and certainly at RICO that, um, that had started to happen over the last year or so. Um, we've got... Uh, most of the accreditations that many of you people will have, no disrespect to anybody in the audience that's from any of these organizations. They're all great organizations, but you know, when you've had these sort of accreditations for four or five years, you know, by nature you get a little bit complacent. And I certainly think at RICO we kind of started to get a bit complacent. Our, our annual um, environmental reports, our sustainability reports were starting to get kind of regurgitated, and it was time really for a pretty serious kick in the ass and really starting to understand what is it all about. And um, what drove that? Well, it, 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 it kind of struck me that even after all these years of going around talking to people that we can't continue to trash the environment as we have, and we can't continue to recognize if we don't change the way we do business, we simply won't be in business in the future. The world is changing at a faster pace now than it ever has in the history of mankind. And technology, which is the game that Rico's in, is even faster again. Our, our, our go-to-market strategy for, from a conceptual idea to delivering you a product is warp speed. Um, 10, 15 years ago, I'd go to the factories in Rico, and they'd show me some prototype, and I'd forget about it. Why? Because I knew before five years, before we had that product in New Zealand, I could sell it to you. Um, and have you guys using it. Um, now when I go up, um, I'm looking at the clock thinking, what time am I going to have this in New Zealand? Um, the time from an idea to delivering it to the market is just unbelievably fast. And as businesses, we need to react. And uh, if we don't, we, we won't survive as a business. And that's really not sustainable. Um, people still think sustainability is all about saving the planet. I'm sorry, guys, but that's the truth of the matter. Um, some companies get it, and those companies, as we've seen in the presentation from Nikki early, earlier, are being hugely successful. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I was in Scotland. I'm Scottish, if you haven't worked that one out already, by the way. Um, seeing my very elderly parents, and uh, I walked into Marks and Spencers. Hands up everyone that has heard of Marks and Spencers. Yeah, there you go, everyone in the room. Arguably one of the best retailers in the world, bar none, arguably. Certainly, if you're an employee of Marks and Spencers, they are the best um, retailer in the world. My friend Bill Donald is in their marketing department. He retired at 50 on 98% full pension for the rest of his life. Wow. Um, I remember when he joined at a university not so long ago thinking he was mad, but uh, incredible company. I walked into their store in Princess Street in Edinburgh. Most expensive real estate in Scotland which is worth a whole lot more than anything in England, if you happen to be English, Rowley. Um, and what is around the walls 
of the ground floor, arguably the most expensive real estate in Edinburgh. By the year 2017, we aim to recycle 100% of our packaging. By the year 2021, we aim to reduce our fuel bill by 50%. But the whole surrounding walls were an endorsement of their sustainability practices and what their goals were in the future. I just stood there and went, wow. In fact, I used my phone and walking around taking photographs. People must have wondered what I was doing. Um, they get it. They get it that as the consumer, I really want to know um, what is it all about. It's not just about saving the planet, but it's about building a business that's going to stand the test of time. It's going to be here in five years' time. It's going to be here in 10 years' time. It's going to be here in 100 years' time. So what do we need to do at RICO to really transform that, um, that kind of vision? Well, the first thing we recognized was no point me standing there as a CEO telling everybody, got to save the planet, we've got to make dollars, and we've got to look after our people. So, you know, let's make some money, let's have a party and go and plant some trees. Um, that's not going to ensure that our business is here in New Zealand um, or, or globally um, protecting and looking after all people in the world, not just our own people that work for us, our suppliers. We've got to be profitable. If we don't make money, we'll not survive. And absolutely, we have to uh, reduce our reliance on the planet. So what we decided was to cascade the responsibility of our sustainability proposition down through the organization. So our sustainability champion became an advisor. And we selected six people throughout the whole of New Zealand, and we skilled them up on what it was to be part of a sustainable organization, an organization in Wellington, Christchurch, and Dunedin that would be here in 50 and 100 years' time. So we empowered them in terms of our vision of where we wanted to be in the future. Coincidentally, which was quite helpful, was that RICO decided to renew their vision, mission, and values, particularly the values in this case. Uh, our values um, in New Zealand, which we had established seven years ago, kind of fit into our current RICO global values that were issued this year. Um, Obviously, global organization, the world's a smaller place. We all need to sing from the same hymn sheet. And the last one there you'll see is ethics and integrity. And that's all about treating our people, our suppliers, our customers, our staff, the communities we work in um, with respect and looking after them and contributing to them. Uh, also, um, it means doing the right thing, um, looking after our planet and recognizing that there's a finite time that the planet will be around and we need to look after it respectfully. So that really drove this change at RECO. And we called this program 360 degrees. Why do we call it 360 degrees? Everything goes around in a circle. People, planet, profit. People, planet, profit. And um, if we look after all three, we will be a more sustainable organization. So how do we achieve that? The most successful companies in the world um, are not companies that have one great idea. Um, that happens if you're Apple and you happen to invent the iPod. Yeah? You make the iPod and all of a sudden you're a multi-billion dollar company and you build a brand that everybody loves. Um, I got a laugh when they released the iWatch. Um, someone I know recently said to me, oh, Mike, you haven't got an iWatch. And I said, an iWatch? Well, I've got to go home every night and charge my watch? I change the battery in my watch every five years. I think that's too often. Yet, yet, Apple have sold millions of iWatches. Why? Because it's an Apple. I gotta have one. I myself, new uh, phone comes out, it's an Apple, I gotta have it. I die without it. Um, new um, iPad comes out, I don't care what feature it's got, I want it because it's really cool. So if you're Apple and you design the iPod, congratulations. But if you're going to sit around in your organization and think, right, we've got to design the next iPod, um, you'll probably go out of business first. So what's the converse? The converse is millions of little ideas, little improvements that collectively will build an organization that will be sustainable. You saw Toyota up on the screen in Nikki's presentation earlier on. Um, one of the best examples of a successful company that's been built by thousands of little ideas. Toyota started out as a sewing machine company, actually, many, many years ago, uh, and eventually moved into motor cars. 
Per employee in the world, Toyota has, 20, uh, on average, 25 ideas per employee per year. Do the math. They've got thousands of employees. They act on something like, last time I looked, 64%. 20, 4, 25 ideas per employee, and act on more than half of them. Anyone here from General Motors? General Motors, 0 0.002 ideas per employee, act on about 15% from what I'm led to believe. What am I telling you there? The most successful car company in the world is made up by thousands of people who do lots of things very well. We launched in New Zealand our iPortal. Um, most businesses have a box that they put ideas in, and every once in a while somebody enters, opens a box, and goes, <laughs> that's a dumb idea. Um, crazy. We uh, have an online portal where we encourage, measure, and reward all our staff at Rico, and we've got about 400 people on Thousands of tiny ideas. In the last, um, I think I had a start here. Might be on my notes. In the last, I, in the last six years, we've had, from memory, about 4,800 ideas, and we have acted on 55% of them, about 2,600 ideas. That really gets me out of bed in the morning. Why? Well, if I come out with one idea, you know, the most amazing printer in the world that prints for free, that doesn't damage the environment at all, um, makes tea and coffee for free, whatever. Um, very easy for my competitors to look, ah, Rico, they've got that whiz bang, flash new piece of software, whatever it is. We need to go and copy that. Yeah? Try copying two and a half thousand little ideas that we've implemented. I'll put it to you, that's impossible. That's the difference between a successful company and a less successful. Now, if you can get that culture of innovation going in your organization, where it's continuous improvement, 360 degrees, um, you'll be successful. 55%, we think we can do a lot better. I love this. Um, what happens if we invest in our people and they leave us? What happens if we don't and they stay? Um, what I like about this is uh, if you're truly sustainable and you're really passionate about your people, yeah, and you get a really good staff person come to you and says, hey, Mike, uh, I need to tell you, I've got a new job. I'm going to work for somebody else. What's your immediate reaction? Your reaction is, oh, I don't believe it. Oh, my top salesperson, my top admin person, my top accountant, that's the wrong attitude. If you've helped that person through their career, and they're going to move somewhere else to a better position, that they will be better fulfilled, that is fantastic. That is a great advert for your organization, because they see your business as an opportunity to develop, fulfill their needs, and then um, move on, hopefully, to greater, better things. And it's ironic how, with that sort of attitude, people often come back. We've got a few people from Rico in the audience tonight, um, some of them have left and come back because they recognize that if we're really helping you progress, we're not doing our job properly. Going to run out of time here in a minute. You've got to have vision. Uh, you've got to motivate your staff. You, clearly, um, at 360 degrees, we're encouraging all staff to get involved in our sustainability program and question themselves, what little part can they play in that 360 degrees to make it all happen? Oh, I'll go back one. This is our new sustainability report. Our last one was boring, absolutely boring. And Charlie came on board, and we got uh, Ivy, thanks to Ivy, and we got this really cool-looking storybook. It's almost like a kid's storybook, because I can read it, right? It's really quick, it's simple, it's clear, it's concise. It's our story. This is who we are, warts and all. And um, I think in this day and age, the younger generation, the X and Y generation, um, don't for a minute, don't think they're looking at people my age and thinking, you guys trashed this environment. Yeah, you've created some of the problems around the world. Um, not only do they want to see us slow it down, they want to see us reverse it. So we've got to respond to them. Um, and, and a lot of talk earlier on about social media, and that, all that's very important. But our story is all about this is who we are. This is where we've come from. This is where we've done well. This is where we've not done so very well, and this is where we're going to improve 
in the future. Thank you.